Welcome to an allotment where the tools have lives of their own. This might seem like an autumn day on a typical allotment. Pumpkins growing, apples ready to be picked, spiders creating dew-covered webs in the blackberry bushes. The only hint that something is not quite normal is a compost bin with vampire fangs. You might have seen something like this out of the corner of your eye and dismissed it as a momentary trick of the light. You know the type of moment I mean. You might even have had one yourself. But come with me to see that sometimes strange things really are happening on the allotment, especially on the night of Halloween in the Tools Life Zone. On this frosty autumn morning, let's meet Imbu, who is a kind little creature who lives on the allotment. He's made from the odds and ends that the allotment holder, old Jack Nooney, couldn't throw away because he thought they might come in handy one day. In fact, Imbu's name is made from the first letters of the words, I might be useful. Today, Imbu is planning to be very useful for he's helping to prepare for the allotment tool's annual Halloween party. Imbu nibbled on his breakfast blackberry while he looked at the pumpkin patch. His friends Notty and Stringalong were meeting him to help choose one for the party. He was just about to climb down and find his friends when he thought he spotted a strange shape disappear behind one of the pumpkins and he had the feeling that something was watching him. But there was nothing to be seen. I must be imagining things, he said to himself. I'm letting my imagination run wild just because it's Halloween. When he found his friends, Grumpy Dibber and Flash Dibber were with them. He asked if anyone had seen the mysterious shape, but no one had. All I've seen, said Grumpy, is a bunch of tools who can't use a pumpkin. It has to be just the right one for our Halloween party, said Notty the little string ball. I'll nail it in my string when we find the right one. Humph, <laughs> said Grumpy. I don't believe in Halloween parties, celebrating scary things. It all seems very daft to me, especially when there's plenty of work to be done on the allotment. Finally, Imbu pointed in excitement to the biggest pumpkin. String balls, sticks and dippers, may I present our party pumpkin? Oh yes! squealed Notty. My string is all a quiver. This is definitely the right one. With that settled, they went to decorate their Halloween party venue. String Along had already been very busy, covering the trestle table with a fine orange sheet and collecting flowers and conkers for the buffet. They all agreed it looked a wonderful spread and were very excited about the party. Once all the preparations were done, they hurried off to the shed to get dressed in their fancy dress costumes. They'd been keeping their costumes secret for weeks, and finally they could be revealed. Only Grumpy Dibber wasn't dressing up. He was far too grumpy to have fun at a party. I'm far too busy making holes to sew for next year's broad beans to be jigging around wearing bits of fleece at a party, he moaned to anyone who'd listen and no one would listen. The tools had hired the local reporter and photographer Kane and Label to take photos of the party so they could be featured in What A Tall magazine's Halloween Gala Edition. The magazine loved publishing glossy photos of all the biggest tools in the area going to fancy parties. Imbu had dressed as Frankenstein's monster he thought it was a great idea because he was made out of lots of odds and ends, just like the monster from the story. He'd even made a cardboard bolt for his neck out of an old chicken manure pellet box. The photo shoot was all set up and there was even a red carpet. Now give us some attitude and work that red carpet, said reporter Kane while Label snapped away taking photos. That's it, strut your stuff. The camera is loving that monster vibe. Give it all you've got. 
That's it. Now say arg. String along was next, dressed as a pumpkin. He blended so well with the real pumpkins in the background that he could hardly be seen and nearly didn't have his photo taken at all. Naughty had come as a little ghost. She'd made a floaty dress and hat from a piece of white garden fleece that she'd bought from Reese the Fleece, who was the allotment's inventor, entrepreneur and business fleece. Water, the watering can, had wrapped himself in strips of fleece, bandages and had come as a mummy. It certainly appeared that Reese had made a lot of fleece sales this year. Reese himself was covered in faux fur and looked like a fierce werewolf. Or should that be weir fleece? But the most handsome tool was Flash Dibber, who was dressed as a vampire with fleece fangs and a dashing red cloak. Of course, he was such a work-shy Dibber that he hadn't wanted to go to much effort with making his costume. Little did anyone know that his elegant cloak was actually one of old Jack Nooney's fancy handkerchiefs that he'd found on the shed floor. Everyone looked very well dressed indeed. We will look like such a fantastic bunch of tools in What a Tool magazine, said Naughty proudly. Laughing happily, they headed off for food and dancing at their party. But what a shock they got when they arrived. Everything was such a mess. The table had been knocked over, the pumpkin was on its side, and the food had been scattered all over the floor. Their party was ruined. Oh no, cried Imbu. What has happened? Who has done this? Why would anyone want to spoil our party? said Naughty crossly. Look here, said Stringalong. What's this strange slime on the ground? It wasn't here before. They all stared at the slime. It looks like it was left behind by whatever made a mess at our party, said Imbu. I've never seen anything like it before, said Flash Dibber, sounding a little bit scared and wrapping his red cloak around him like a comfort blanket. Perhaps it is ectoplasm left behind by a Halloween ghost, said Imbu with a shiver. Even though I'm dressed as one, I'm, I'm not sure I believe in ghosts, said Naughty. But if we follow the trail of slime, perhaps we will find whoever ruined our party. Then we can tell them off. Follow the trail of ectoplasmic slime, said String along nervously. Are you sure that's a good idea? I mean, what if we find an actual ghost? Well, if you're going ghost hunting, then you'll need to buy some special equipment, said Reese the Fleece. Come with me to my special shop. Reese was such an entrepreneurial fleece that he was never one to miss a business opportunity. So they all trooped off to Reese's shop, and on the way they bumped into Grumpy Dibber, who'd come to find out what all the shouting was about. Let me see, said Reese, looking at the things he had for sale in his ghost hunting stuff shop. I think you'll need my latest invention, the Reesomatic Ghost Ghoul and Spirit Detector, patent pending. Grumpy looked at it carefully. It looks like a garden stick with a green plastic wire on the end. Are you sure this works? This is state-of-the-art, top-of-the-range ghost hunting equipment, said Reese indignantly. If there's a ghost on this allotment, you'll find it with this ghost detector. We'll buy one, said Imbu, and they headed off to find their ghost. Naughty instantly took charge of the Resomatic Ghost Detector. I should be the one to operate it, given my ghost-busting heritage. Did you know that my mother's cousin was the stunt string ball who had to tie wires together on the proton backpacks in the Ghostbusters film? Grumpy snorted at yet another of Naughty's tales about her relative's exploits. Ghostbusters, indeed! The only thing likely to get busted here is my patience dealing with all this malarkey. The intrepid band of ghost-busting tools followed the trail of ectoplasmic slime along the ground, winding through the vegetable beds. It was very dark out there, 
and the Tors were a bit nervous, as they were normally tucked away snugly in their sheds at night, not out roaming in the darkness. All the plants that seem so familiar in the daytime look shadowy and mysterious in the moonlight. Goodness knows what was lurking among their leaves. As they reached the salad plants, Imbu got a big shock and stopped in his tracks. Yikes! cried Imbu in alarm. There's a trail of blood on the ground and a, and a severed head wearing a black pointed witch's hat. Someone has cut off a witch's head. Let me see, said Grumpy, pushing forward. Grumpy looked at the head in the hat. That isn't a severed head, it's a small beetroot. A small beetroot, said Imbu in surprise. Why would a small beetroot be wearing a witch's hat? It wasn't wearing a witch's hat. Somebody's playing tricks on us, said Grumpy. That's just a bit of fabric weed suppressant made to look like a hat. And I bet I know who's behind this. It's that young dodgy dibber. I heard him giggling and hopping around earlier. It's just the sort of silly trick he'd play. Oh, I'm so pleased it isn't a severed head or a small beetroot into witchcraft and the occult, said Imbu in relief. They carried on following the ectoplasmic slime, passing the kale and broccoli and the cauliflower plants. Eventually they reached Neverfall, the compost bin. Neverfall had also got into the Halloween spirit and was wearing a black bin liner and fangs. So wonderful to see you all. Are you bringing the party to me? Oh, splendid. I do so love a shindig. I hope you bought party food too. Canapes and what not. I'm so famished. Oh, sorry, we haven't. We're following this trail of ectoplasmic slime, said Imbu. Do you know what made it? Well, come to mention it, I did see something waft by a little while ago. It was heading towards the deep dark tangle where the butternut squashes grow. What did it look like? asked Grumpy. Was it young Dodgy Dibber? No, no, I don't think so. I'd never seen anything like it before. It was a white shape, shimmering hovering, almost see-through, like a phantom in the night, said Neverfall. And as it passed by, I felt a shiver go right through my compost, from the top of my lid to my composty bottom. Was it a ghost? asked Notty, holding her re ghost detecting stick very tightly. Whatever the entity was, the otherworldly encounter left me very hungry. I have a proper paranormal hunger, said Neverfall. Are you sure you don't even have a little morsel of food with you? Oh, oh, we'll bring you something to eat later, if we survive the meeting with the entity, that is, said Imbu. Well, you should be able to catch the entity if you hurry. Go past the raspberry bushes, and when you reach the spinach plants, you will be at the edge of the tangle. Enter it, if you dare. They looked at each other nervously, but plucked up courage to keep following the ectoplasmic slime. Sure enough, when they reached the spinach plants, they spotted a shape hiding in the leaves. It was a strange white shape which seemed to be floating just above the ground. Oh, we've really found the ghost, said Imbu in fright. Notty waved her ghost detector at it. I am not getting any ghostly readings from it, she said. Well, of course you won't, said Grumpy Dibber. It's just a broken garden stick. Reese the Fleece growled. Wait a moment. I know garden fleece when I see it. This is no ghost. This is something wrapped in garden fleece. Fleece from my shop. Fleece that's not been paid for. This isn't another worldly encounter. It's a crime against my profit margins. Rhys stepped forward and pulled back the fleece to reveal a strange little creature. See, this isn't a ghost. The little creature looked at them in alarm. Are you the one making all the slime? demanded Imbu. 
All right, I've been known to make a bit of slam when I'm scared, like, said the creature. Did you mess up our party? said Notty, waving the stick at him crossly. Suddenly, to everyone's surprise, the little creature blushed very red and big tears rolled down its face. Oh, oh, I'm sorry for trashing your party, like, sobbed the little creature. Oh, I'm gutted. I didn't mean to, like. I just wanted to take a recce, cos everything looked so awesome. Then when I turned round, I knocked over the table with me tail. When I saw the food go all over the floor, I panicked and slithered off, leaving slime wherever I went. Then I got caught up in some garden fleece and couldn't see where I was going. But why didn't you just ask to come to the party? said Imbu. I didn't think you'd want to invite a snug, said the creature. What's a snug? said Grumpy. I'm a snug. I'm half snail and half slug. Well, why wouldn't we want to invite a snug to a party? Uh, apart from the fact that we didn't know you existed, said Imbu. Well, I don't have any friends, so I try to keep hidden. That's why you don't know me, said the snug sadly. Well, how comes you don't have any friends, said Imbu in surprise. You seem like a very nice little snug now we've met you. Oh, well, I've tried making friends, but it never seems to work like, said the snug with a sigh. When I try talking to the snails down by the lettuces, they just turn away from me. They don't want to know. They won't be my friend because I'm not a snail. And when I try talking to the slugs on the path, they don't want to know me neither. They don't want to be my friend because I'm not a slug. They say I'm like a football supporter who half supports Everton and half supports Liverpool. Accepted by none, hated by all, destined always to walk alone. Imbu and Notty rushed forward to cuddle the little snug. Well, now you have us as your friends, and you won't have to walk or sliver alone again ever again, said Notty kindly. The little snug blushed even redder. In fact, you must come back with us now and join in our party. All right, that's right nice of you, said the snug. I'd love to go. I've never been to a fancy do before, apart from the one I wrecked earlier like. They all went back to the Halloween party and danced and ate food and took some tasty morsels to never fall the compass bin, of course. And they played games and sang songs and did the conga with Stringalong's rather tipsy Auntie Gladys and laughed at silly, scary Halloween stories. This has been the best party ever, declared Imbu. And we even went on a proper ghost hunt and found a new friend, said Notty to the snug. The snug couldn't stop grinning. Oh, made up like, I finally found a new home amongst a great bunch of tools and I'll never need to be lonely on Halloween or at any time again. And with that, he was dragged back onto the dance floor for another conga. So the next time you're feeling a bit lonely and think that you don't fit in with either the slugs or the snails, just remember that a fine bunch of tools might be just around the next corner, ready to accept you for who you are and to invite you to be their friend. You might find them at any time, around any corner, and not just around the corners that you'll find in the Tools Life Zone. The End